Finally, we are going to start booting the Spring Boot itself. We are going to start working with the Spring Boot and we are going to get to understand the concept that we have been discussing for at least past three lectures so far. And we will see how we can get our hands dirty in this particular lecture. So before we get into Spring Boot, first of all, we need to have a Spring Boot project and all those dependencies, libraries, which is required for the Spring Boot code to start working with. In order for making our lives more easier, Spring Boot team has already offered us what is called as a Spring Initializer, which is available online. You can just go ahead and choose there. And you can just see that the Spring Initializer will be very, very helpful to create a template project for us and all the required dependencies for us to get started with the Spring Boot. So we are going to see how we can make use of that in this particular lecture, create a project and also we'll start writing a bit of a code, like a classical code and then a Spring Boot container code. And we'll see the difference between both of them and understand the power of Spring Boot and how the dependency injection is really working. So in order for doing that, I'm just going to go and search for the Spring Boot initializer uh, in the Google. And you see that there is this start.spring.io website comes in. Just go ahead and choose that link there. And this is the same one that I just showed you in the screenshot in our presentation. And over here, you can see that it is going to show us quite a lot of things. Do you want the project to be a Gradle project or Kotlin project or a Maven project? You can choose the project uh, build uh, framework that you wanted to use. Let's say I'm going to choose Maven. That is what I'm quite preferred with. So I can choose that over here. And you can also choose the language like Java, Kotlin or Groovy because Spring supports all these three languages. So you can choose any one of them depending upon your choice. And because this course is going to be fully on Java, so I'm going to go with Java there. And the Spring Boot version, there are so many different versions available at the time while I'm recording this. And I'm going to choose the latest version over here. And I'm also going to choose the Java version, which is going to be 21, which is the stable version. So I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to leave the group, artifact, name, description, package name, everything just as it is, because uh, we don't really need to worry about these part at the moment. And once I have that, you can also add some dependencies if you wanted to. For instance, if I want to add the test containers dependencies for my testing, I can do that from here. So you can do those operations as well if you wanted to, but I'm, I'm really not interested in at the moment so i'm just going to leave that as it is at least for the basics we're just going to focus more on spring boot so i'm going to go ahead and generate it and once i generate that you will see that it is going to download a demo.zip file for me which is going to then help me uh, create the project so i'm going to go ahead and extract it and open in my intellij ide so i'm going to be using intellij ide for the development purpose i mean that will be helpful for you to align to follow along the course if you're more toward different ides I would just highly recommend you to focus on IntelliJ if you wanted to. But if you are very comfortable with the other IDEs like Eclipse, just go ahead with that. But just that the course will be using IntelliJ IDE for the choice. This is the template which I just got downloaded uh, from, the, uh, from the Spring Initializer website. Uh, and you can see that we have got the Maven project because this is a Maven project that so we have got all those details over here. Uh, and also we have got a source folder, which is going to have the uh, main folder and there is a test folder. So this uh, main folder is where you have got the Java application, which is going to be like a demo application. You can see that there's a package name and everything has been added there. And we have got a Spring Boot application annotation here. So this is the first annotation that you are encountering in the Spring Boot while we are discussing about this particular course. So let's try to even change the visuals of this IDE from dark theme to lighter theme because it will be great for you to uh, see how we can go along with this course. There we go. So you can see it clearly this time. And you can see that this is the class that I was talking about, which is going to be responsible for us to work with the Spring Boot uh, initialization and also understand how the Spring Boot can be uh, can be instantiated and worked with. Because this is the main method of this project. So this is the starting point of the project, pretty much like the starting point in many other uh, Java program, like a main method. That's what this particular main method is. And that is where we are going to be starting to work with the Spring Boot itself. That's why this Spring Boot application annotation, which is responsible for quite a lot of different operations, which I'm not going to talk about at the moment over here, but at least 
you can see that while you start running any of the code from here, your code just gonna work. And also you can run your application lifecycle starting from this particular location. Well, as that said, I'm gonna start writing a classical code first, and then I will show you and how it's different from the Spring Boot code, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and write a new class file. I'm gonna call this as first class, right? And this first class has got a constructor of that uh, over here. I'm gonna say like first class instantiated. And I'm also gonna create a method like first method. So there are two things that I have got in this particular uh, class file, right? So in order for me to instantiate in a normal ideal world uh, of the Java programming, if you're not gonna be using Spring Boot for that matter, all you're gonna do is just like, you know, say like first class uh, and then you're gonna create an object using the new keyword. And then you're gonna call the method using the first method, uh, using the object of the first class, right? That's what we'll be doing over here. And once I run this code, there is not much of a Spring Boot that we have used because this uh, Spring application dot run method basically going to create uh, the context of the Spring Boot application, uh, which is going to do quite a lot of different magics behind the scene. But we are not even using its power at the moment. So all we're just trying to do is like pretty much like a like a run method over here. So if I try to run this particular code, you will see that it's gonna show me the first class instantiated because we have instantiated the class first class. Uh, and then we are also calling the method first method. So it's saying first class first method, right? So that's what this printing is happening at the moment over here. So even if I command this line of code, because we are, as I told you, we're not even using the Spring's power at the moment. If I try to run the code, this is just gonna work. You see that the first class instantiated, first class method coming up. But if I uncomment this, you will see there are gonna be a bit more uh, lines uh, come in over there. But you see that it shows you, this is the Spring Boot application. And there is a, starting the demo application using the Java 21 with a process ID of 5557 uh, and there is no active profile set. So falling back to one default profile as default and started the demo application in 0.516 second. See, there are so many things happening over here. These are all coming because basically this is a Spring Boot application. So it's gonna be starting an entire Spring Boot application for you and also running in the socket as you can see over here. So many things are happening. This line does everything for you because this is gonna really start and Spring Boot application for you. But we are just focusing on a very plain uh, Java code. That's why this line of code is what matters to us at the moment. I know I'm going a bit slower. At the moment, maybe you may feel like Kartik we know all these things sometime and maybe sometime you feel like Kathy, you just it's a lot of information which we are kind of knowing them before why do you want to explain me but because this is like a starting of the spring boot some students may not be understanding what these things are that's why i'm going a bit slower this time but once we get along this course once you start understanding spring boot more i won't be explaining these things great now you know, this is a plain uh, way of doing you know, Java code. That's why it's all working fine. But now I'm going to replace this first class code into a spring code. So how do I actually do that? Remember, we can create the spring boot bean or spring bean in the spring boot code using annotations or Java based code. So when I say Java based code, I can use at configuration and at bean. But if I want to use the Java annotations, I can use the annotation something like component. So if I just put an add and then I start adding the component, you see that it is actually coming from a package called r.springframework.stereotype. So basically all these add component or add service or add controller, these are coming from uh, this package as springframework.stereotype framework. So I'm gonna go choose the add component this time, just to keep things simple for you to get understanding where we're going now. And I'm not gonna go with this option that you're seeing over here. Rather, we're gonna use the Spring framework. So I'm not gonna use the normal plain old Java uh, operation. Rather, uh, we're gonna use the Spring operation. So this Spring application is the one which is responsible for launching the Spring application, right? 
This also gives you an application context to us as a written type. So we can use the context now, the, the application context. I'm going to just say var context. So var is a type which can be used as an implicitly typed variable, which, is, which knows what type it is. It's a runtime uh, because the run method return, returns as the uh, the application context. So this var will now become an application context. So now I can use this context object and I can use this method called as get bean. You see that there are so many methods available over here. Uh, it's a lot of method to be honest. But the one which we are focusing at the moment is going to be the get bean method alone. Get bean. And over here, I can pass the bean. You remember, once I decorate a class as add component, I'm already creating a bean over here. So now I can just say uh, as first class dot class, you see that I can create the class over here and then I can get the object of the first class, something like this. And then I can call the object uh, using the variable and then I can call the first method, which is the same two lines of code that you're seeing over here. We are now using the Spring Boot to get the bean of the first class and then we are calling the method using its object. Pretty much exactly the same thing. And now if I run the code, it is just gonna work pretty much exactly the same way how we saw in the um, the normal Java code. Now let me ask Karthik, what is the difference? Come on, this is exactly the same thing other than a fancy method like get bean that you have used. I'll just show you immediate benefit for you. Every single time, let's say, while you call a first class over here these classes are going to be creating an object every single time so every single time you create an object it's going to create a new object for you over here so let's say i'm going to call the uh, first class and then i'm going to say first class again like first class one um, and first class uh, new dot uh, first method something like that so you see that we have first class and first class new right let's say if i want to uh, compare the instances using the first class is equal to first class new. Are they both same object? Do you know how that will be in Java? You know the answer already, right? They are always not the same object. So it's going to be false all the time. You can actually print their hash code if you wanted to see what is their object ID. So if I just say system dot out dot print uh, ln, uh, and I'm going to say first uh, class hash and then I'm gonna say the hash as gonna be first class dot hash code and similarly I'm gonna print for the first class news hash as well and if I try to run the code you will notice that the hash are different over here which means the object is entirely different for these two object creations that you are doing over here which proves the point that they, these objects are not quite the same but in Spring Boot, by default, if you create any of the object, they are going to be of same instance, which means they're always singleton by default, which makes our life more easier because in Selenium, we always need to have only one web driver object. We can't create multiple web driver object. That is one great thing that we can see immediately the benefit from the Spring Boot. And I hope you already got the idea. And I will quickly show you how it actually looks like. So this is the first class over here, right? And let's say I'm gonna comment these lines of code. You have seen this are different. Um, so first class, and I'm gonna say first class new, uh, and it's gonna be the first class new dot first method, whatever. And if I want to see the system dot uh, out dot print, are they same instances now? If I try to run this, the answer is gonna be yes. You see that it is always the same because by default, these bean are created as sing singleton object. And it's going to be always the same object all the time. So now if you want to see the hash of them, uh, let's say the uh, first class uh, hash, and then it's going to be uh, the first class dot hash code. And then I'm going to write one more over here. And now let's try to run this code. You will see that the hash codes are exactly the same, which tells us that 
this is already exactly the same object. This proves the point that this is already a great benefit for us over here. And now I'm going to let you to digest whatever that we have discussed so far. How we have created a bean and how we called the bean and how the bean is different from the classical code.